friends in Christ, God and Christ Jesus has looked with favor upon you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal promise and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthen you anew to follow the way of peace. Spirit be with you all.
Blessed are you, God of hope, for you promised to bring forth the shoot for the stump of Jesse, who will bring justice to the poor, who will deliver the needy and crush the oppressor, who will stand as a signal of hope for all people. As we light these candles, turn our wills to bear the fruit of repentance, transform our hearts to live in justice and harmony with one another, and fix our eyes on the root of Jesse, Jesus Christ, the hope of all nations. O people of hope, come. Let us rejoice in the faithfulness of the Lord.
But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's self. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old, and as in former years. The word of the Lord. Our psalm today is from Luke chapter 1, verses 68 through 79. Read it responsibly. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us, mighty Savior, born in the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old, of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies. We read the words of you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our lives. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way. Give him God's people more knowledge of salvation by forgiveness of our sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart, for all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Word of the Lord. Thank you. 
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Victoria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Babylon, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. This is the fifth Sunday that I've preached here at Good Shepherd, and I've noticed that every Sunday so far, I urged us to take the long view rather than the short view of things. You might as well get ready for that to happen again today. <laughs> That's because our assigned scripture texts at the end of one year and the beginning of the next really do keep calling us to a longer view. They call us to consider both last things, and first things. So, you may feel like you've heard today's sermon before, and aspects of it you have heard before, but there's more to unpacking God's Word for us than simply hearing it. That isn't all we're being asked to do. Many years ago, someone told me the story of a new young preacher who gave his first sermon to his congregation on the subject of loving our enemies and doing unto others as we would have others do unto us. The congregation filed out after the service congratulating him on his fine sermon. The next Sunday, he again preached the same sermon it struck them as a little bit odd, but he was just starting out, and maybe he was having trouble getting a handle on this weekly preaching thing. So they all went out thanking him again for the fine sermon. The third Sunday, he once again preached the same sermon on loving our enemies and doing unto others as we would have done more to us. An elder in the pew muttered to his wife, this has got to stop. <laughs> and on the way out, asked the young preacher directly when he was going to come up with a different sermon. Well, the young man replied innocently enough, I'm not exactly sure. I'm waiting to see some evidence that this one has been heard. Evidence that the word God has for us has been heard. Evidence that we are living in God's love and mercy in the face of tremendous setbacks or injustices or illness or loss or fear or confusion. Evidence that we're taking a longer view and finding a blessing 
in the midst of much that weighs us down. The Advent message of light shining in darkness, of promise when all seems lost, is a good place to start. Advent is a good time to remember that we are prophets of the future, not of our own. We do not own the future. An American Roman Catholic bishop wrote about that back in 1979, a period coinciding with the prophetic ministry of Archbishop Oscar Romero of El Salvador. His comments about being a prophet of the future, not our own, became associated with Romero. Listen to some of what he said. We cannot everything. And there is a sense of liberation in that. This enables us to do something and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it's a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter in and then do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of the future, not our own. Archbishop Romero cried out against social injustice, murder, and torture in his native El Salvador, and he exhorted his people to seek peace and forgiveness. He was assassinated by a gunman while serving mass in San Salvador on March 24, 1980. Although a suspect, part of a right-wing death squad, was identified, no one has yet been prosecuted for this murder. When we are weary or tempted to give in to hopelessness, these words about ministries like Romero's are words to hold on to. We are prophets of a future not our own, a future that is God's future. The first two chapters of the Gospel of Luke, four songs are sung by and about prophets, singing in a future that is God's future. Quite a remarkable thing when you think about it. The first song in the Gospel of Luke is the Magnificat, Mary praising prophesying a world being turned upside down. When she goes to meet Elizabeth after the angel announces to her that she will bear the Christ. The second is Zechariah's song. Zechariah is Elizabeth's husband. And that song calls his newborn son John the prophet of the Most High. This infant will become John the Baptist. The third is the angel's song to the shepherds in the fields at Jesus' birth, proclaiming God's future of peace and goodwill on earth. And the fourth is Simeon's song, when he recognizes the infant Jesus in the temple as a long-awaited Messiah. Each of these songs lifts up a poetic vision of the future, not our own. Mary, the angels and singers, seem to catch on to this message quickly, but Zechariah is an outlier. And it was Zechariah's song, long and coming, 
that we read today in place of the usual Old Testament song. So we had a New Testament song today. In the first chapter of Luke, Zechariah was among a particular group of priests on a service rotation in the Jerusalem temple is chosen by God to serve at the altar. And the practice is to go in to pray on behalf of the people with an offering of incense while the people wait outside for a blessing following the prayers. That day at the altar, Zechariah is visited by the angel Gabriel and told that his elderly wife, who has been called barren for the duration of their marriage, will now conceive a child whose name will be John. Zechariah is, so to speak, dumbfounded by this idea and doesn't believe it's possible. The angel then says to him, Because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak, until the day these things occur. Zechariah goes out, and the people wait for the blessing, and he can't speak. <laughs> but they realize that he has seen something. A vision. In his mute state, he continues his priestly rotation at the temple, after which he returns home, and his wife Elizabeth conceives. This story is important. We can't presume to know what can and cannot happen and when. My husband Michael has recently become fond of saying anything can happen. He does so most often in the context of yet more craziness in the world. But also, it's spoken in the context of God's future not being foreclosed upon. God's future still being present in whatever happens. The angel made Zechariah mute in the face of wonderful, unbelievable news, and uh, Barbara Brown Taylor suggests Zechariah's muteness was more a gift than a punishment. As if the angel was saying, don't be so arrogant, Zechariah. Spend some time pondering this amazing news instead of telling us what you think and why it can't be. You aren't in charge of deciding what's possible. After nine long months of silent pondering, Zechariah confirms in writing that yes, the name of this child is supposed to be John after he was born. And that name means God is gracious, the name given by the angel to his unlikely child. Then, Zechariah's barren imagination gives birth to a decidedly visionary song of what is possible with God. That song that we repeated today. Maybe in the sixth month of uh, Elizabeth's pregnancy, he overheard young Mary, the mother of our Lord, singing her Magnificat, a similar song when she came to visit Elizabeth, having just been visited by the angel Gabriel herself. Perhaps by the time his son was born, Zechariah had learned to listen and to marvel and to join his imagination to God's for the sake of all creation, bringing a blessing. Zechariah's song starts with a blessing, and it too is kind of remarkable. It's a blessing of God. How wonderful and surprising that we also might bless God, who is all about blessing us. 
It's a song about the work God has given to Zechariah's tiny son, John. Work that is fully about the future, not his home. The work of going before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of sins. The strong final stanza of Zechariah's song tells us what the purpose of God's future is. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. That's God's vision for our world. Talk about blessing, about hope, about keeping God's long view in mind. This is the humility to which Zechariah is called, and this is blessing. He has to put aside his own opinions about what's possible and live instead into the future that God is determined to bring. The words associated with us from the narrow bring out again this advent in this darkness, in this time when we are tempted once again to hopelessness. So I ask you to listen to this fuller version and the expanded future before us that it describes. It helps now and then to step back and take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it is even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is a way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. No statement says all there could be said, no prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the church's mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. This is what we are about. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything, and there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something, and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. Can we to become prophets of the future, not our own, caring passionately and compassionately for that future now. This isn't only an Advent task, but it most certainly does belong to Advent. This time, when we look both to God's coming in Christ in the past and to God's holding of the future. God proclaims that there is going to be light given to those who sit in the darkness and in the shadow of death. 
and that we will be guided into the way of peace. Today on this second advent, may our prayers also rise up like the incense that Zechariah offered at the altar, like hope in the hearts of those who are hopeless. And we live in the long view as prophets of the future, not our own. May God's vision of what is possible on ours as well. Amen. our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that we have seen and have seen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternity of God and the Father, God from God, and right from right, true God and true God, the God from God. In this season, 
the watching and waiting. Let us pray for all peoples and places that yearn for God's presence. You send messengers into the world to proclaim the day of your coming. Make our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay preachers confident in their preaching, that their words and our lives bear witness to your grace. We thank you for our many blessings. Hear us, O God. Mercy is great. Send your spirit to all living creatures that are in danger. Provide them with shelter and care, and bring us into right relationship with the earth that you created and called good. The flowers given by Melinda Williams to your glory are a reminder of the beauty that you alone have created. Hear us, O God. Send leaders to our nations, cities, schools, and businesses to work on behalf of those who have lost parents, spouses, and loved ones. Immigrants, the imprisoned, those living in poverty, and all who are oppressed. Make them bold in their commitments to justice and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. Send prophets to speak difficult truths, even when they are poorly received. Embolden those who ask hard questions and challenge accepted ways. Instill in youth and elders alike a passion for pointing to Jesus in all things. Hear us, O God. Send your servants to care for those who suffer. Use our ministry in our lives to reach out with compassion to those who are hungry, oppressed, lonely, or ill. We ask this especially for Earl Hayes, Lisa Knickerbocker Sears, Jeff Rawson, and Kim Postbro. Grant them healing and wholeness. We also pray for those who are addicted and homeless. Help us to see your face in them and show us ways to bring comfort and aid. Hear us, O oh God. Send your comfort to those who cannot be here with us today, especially the homebound, including Ron Painter, Eleanor Zawatowski, Carol LaRosa, and Patsy Johnson. Also the men and women in the military, including Costi Burrell, Jordan Hill, Brent Jacobs, Nathan and Michelle Pekowski, Jacob Dio, Zachary Schaefer, and Mika Gardner. Thank you for those who return home safely. Show us how to provide them care and understanding. Comfort those who grieve and gather around you those who have died. Hear us, O God. Send your love to families in need of your strength, especially the families of the victims of the most recent school shooting at Oxford High School. Help survivors to heal and hold in your arms the children who have perished. Kate Meyer, Anna St. Juliana, Madison Baldwin, and Justin Schilling. Mindful of the tragedy placed upon others, we pray for our own families, for our church families, and this month we pray for Kathy Schiller, for Sears, Lisa Siler, for Stevens, and the Sutherlands. And we pray for our little land families, especially Carrie and her class, Sebastian, Grace, Beatrice, Tommy, Aiden, Erica, Aiden. Maddie, Maddox, and Abigail. Hear us, O oh God. We remember your saints, both those publicly celebrated and those more humbly remembered. Confident that your work will be completed, we live in faith until the day of your coming. Hear us, O oh God. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive the prayers of those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen.
peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Peace. 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 Peace.
creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is alive. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Come Holy Spirit. Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord, 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 Friends, come to Christ's banquet, feast on God's gift of grace.
So, do we have any announcements this morning? Great. Lisa. Um, Dave and I would like to just continue thanking all of you for your generosity. It's outstanding. We're overcome by uh, the gifts that are still coming through to us. Um, I do have a gift card from here with no name on it. So if you haven't received a card, and I still am finishing the card, um, we could sort of maybe inquire <laughs> <laughs> um, because I don't know who to send it to. That's happened a couple of times, so it's been a little tricky. Um, trying to figure that out. Um, if you have containers that we haven't returned yet, um, please come up and tell me who you are because I don't know. <laughs> Um, there's a lot of you know, those Chinese takeout containers, and there's a couple of black ones that um, I just don't know where they are. <laughs> so, let us know. Um, we will have Jane Gurmel in the corner, and we will have color, and then I think that's it. Thank you again so much. We love you. We love you too, Lisa and Dave. Any more announcements, Rob? Well, I don't know. Um, now, I just want to mention to you that the right now, about um, Beer Patty Match is actually um, every Wednesday night Joey Adams. Um, they are going to be from our hosting Holden TV Toyo. So, um, there are three days you may not be watching. One is um, on the Pilot Facebook page, or two, on, um, on the All Facebook page, the Shepherd Facebook page. Or three, if you don't have people, that's okay. <laughs> because um, they are doing a Zoom thing. So if you go on to Dear Titan's website, Titan Advent 2021, you can see. You got to get the the Zoom link. The you request a Zoom link, and you want to go to. So this is going to be Wednesday night at 7:30 p.m. So we have FX going on. So that is that's going to be added. So it's going to be all the way here to Evan Pool. Back to me. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Go ahead. I just have a few announcements. I just want to talk to your back. Um, first of all, you want to use the microphone? Can you hear you? Okay. <laughs>
we otherwise would not have. Thank you for all the work you did last year with reporting to see a good draft. I have. <laughs> uh, if you want to celebrate the season, I don't need that. <laughs> if you want to celebrate the season of the Messiah and we perform this evening at Taylor Club, they have a 3 30 uh, performance, but it is sold out. Um, there's no price for tickets, it's just they have to keep the count down for the attendance in the sanctuary. You have to wear a mask. Uh, but at 7 p.m., I think there's still like 50 places you just go and take your chance if you get to be like the Messiah. Again, we'll be supporting this evening at 7 o'clock. I have a brief announcement, and that is just that I noticed that he brought in chocolate chip cookies. And I want this is sort of an alert, sort of a warning that there's a chocolate chip monster to my right. <laughs> and, and so I would I would get chocolate chip cookies right away. <laughs> <laughs> the numbers of the hymns um, do appear in your bulletin, but also to put them up on the screen. And that's and he explained that the decision had been made not to do that because we didn't want people to be encouraged to sing when they're not supposed to be doing that. But he was willing to put them up there if I would just I, I thought it would be an easier reminder for people to look at some of those wonderful texts that we have. And, our and so that's the reason we we'll encourage them to do that. But you'll see. <laughs> okay, everybody can go now. Oh, baby, I'm sorry. Right to your mouth. We have two weeks left of collecting toilet trees for the New store. Uh, it's the Red Cross Crisis Center down in Norman, across from the high school. We used to be our toy, but because of COVID, the toys became great because we have to fall out of toiletries when we have to have one in regular size. All of the shampoo, toothpaste, toothbrushes, everything is in a closed container. Uh, we only have two more weeks to go. So, and if you know what happened, it was a big bag in the mud. Our local people know about it, but they would like to send it out to a congregation because they go to dire needs to help out with that right now. And uh, I don't know why we can sing <laughs> Happy Birthday, but we can't sing it. Glory to God. You want to know what? Pardon me? I didn't hear the last question. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why we can sing. Happy birthday, everyone. Well, let me explain to you. Glory to God. Right here? Hey, you Until I get approval from some committee, we are going to hum happy birthday yeah, today. Yeah, you can say your hum is Sandy's. <laughs> 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 so, so we are celebrating birthdays this month. Larry Schiller, Kayla McCure, Tony Bolts, Peggy Borkowski, and Carol McQuay. <laughs> Denise? <laughs> 